So there was a press conference for the Savannah Soto case this morning. And if you ask me, this press conference made a couple of things clear. For one, this press conference made it clear that this story is not quite over yet. There's a possibility of a third suspect. There's a possibility that the mother is being questioned now. There's a possibility that the father was more involved in this than what has been stated so far. There's a possibility that there may be more charges against the father. A strap was found. They're guessing and thinking that it was the murder weapon, but we have to determine, was this Christopher's weapon? Did it belong to Matthew? From everything that was stated in this press conference, they made it clear that this investigation is still ongoing. They're still asking questions. They probably still want to talk to other people. And this makes me feel better because all of that information that was released yesterday, I read through it and then I had to read through it again and read through it again because there's something there that doesn't sit right with me. It's not all the way adding up. It's like the math ain't all the way mathing for me. Now, I could be wrong. What do I know? I'm perfectly okay with being wrong. But when I looked at all of the information released yesterday, if I'm to believe what they said, then I really do believe that there are there was more involvement on the father's behalf and maybe even other people as well. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in the future. Right now, I want to go ahead and show you all this press conference. Before I do, I need a huge favor from all of you all. I need you to hit that thumbs up button, and I need you to hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel along the way. It helps the channel a whole lot. But I'm going to roll this quick little press conference. It's about 15 minutes, and then when it's done, you already know I'm going to be right back with more thoughts. Uh, District Attorney Joe Gonzalez to, to be here today and make a few comments at the end of this uh, of this briefing and uh, we'll uh, we'll make this short and sweet I, I have some most of the information I have here I think you've already been privy to uh, I do have a little bit of new information the information I'm going to give you I will answer questions to clarify but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about anything else simply because this is an open investigation and we still have a lot of work to do. So uh, again, my condolences to the families of Savannah and Matthew. Uh, by now, everybody's aware of the incidents, uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time rehashing facts that are already known, but I will go over them high level. So on 12-26-23, our officers discovered two deceased individuals in a Kia Optima and our homicide detectives at that point began their investigation right on that scene. Um, detectives learned that both victims were involved in the sale of narcotics and used their cell phones to conduct much of their business. Detectives collected the victims' phones, and with the help of uh, the United States Secret Service, we were able to extract information that led to the development of a possible location of a suspect vehicle that was seen on the surveillance video. That occurred on Wednesday, 1-3-24. Detectives drove to that location and saw the suspect vehicle. They approached the home where the suspect vehicle was, not, where it was and they knocked on the door. An individual by the name of Ramon Preciado answered the door and seemed to know why SAPD was there and cooperated with the investigation. Both Ramon and Christopher were home and brought to the, to the SAPD homicide office for questioning. During the interviews, both suspects made enough statements to implicate them in the murder. Detectives walked warrants for their arrest. Christopher was arrested for, I'm sorry, was arrested on the charge of capital murder. Ramon was arrested on the charge of abuse of a corpse. Yesterday, 1-4, more charges were filed. Christopher was also charged with abuse of a corpse, uh, altering, destroying, or concealing evidence uh, of a human cor on a human corpse. Ramon was also charged with alt altering, destroying, concealing evidence, uh, human corpse. 
Detectives also conducted a search warrant at the home of the suspects where evidence was recovered. There is still an active investigation, and I'm not going to go into too much of the details as I've previously said because I don't want to jeopardize the uh, integrity of the case or make the DA's job any harder once he gets uh, involved in it. Um, the final piece of information I have for you is that the gun, believed to be, in, be the murder weapon, has been recently recovered from the suspect's home, and we'll share that with you. And um, Joe, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Chief. Good morning, everyone. First, I want to thank Chief McManus for inviting me to be uh, a part of this press conference. Uh, and uh, before I begin, I also want to extend my condolences to the, the Soto and Guerra families as they are in the midst of mourning. They are in the midst of of grieving for the loss of their loved ones. So I, I think it would be appropriate for us to give them the respect that is due them uh, during this period. But I, I do want to say that, that uh, as I mentioned before, uh, arrests were made. I was confident because I knew the kind of work that happens over here. I know the kind of dedication that the San Antonio Police Department has. They, they, would, uh, they would identify suspects and make arrests, and that's exactly what happened. So I want to commend uh, Chief McManus. I want to commend the entire command staff, and I especially want to, want to call out the, the uh, lead homicide detective for doing an outstanding job. Uh, I'm sure it's typical. Uh, he may have had uh, others assist him, but I know that, that, uh, that his team uh, was working around the clock, and it made a difference because we always want – uh, to formulate a suspect as soon as possible. We always want uh, to identify someone who is a perpetrator of a crime as soon as possible, uh, and that happened here. So again, uh, my gratitude uh, to the entire department and specifically to the detectives that were involved in this case. As I have uh, said uh, recently, uh, our job is, is just beginning, but uh, we have to give SAPD time to uh, complete their investigation. What, what they do when they, uh, and the term is walking warrant, when they present uh, an affidavit for an arrest warrant, uh, they uh, only need to present probable cause to a magistrate judge, but that's only the beginning. Uh, they have the responsibility to complete the investigation, and I, I know that they will do that. They will do an outstanding job as that they've done so far. So let's, let's give them the time to do what they need to do. Uh, we have 90 days to indict uh, these cases, and so uh, I am sure that they're going to get a prosecution guide, which is uh, the term that we use uh, for a complete file. I'm sure that they will get it to us in the appropriate time and, and before the, that 90-day uh, timeline. Uh, so, uh, again, I want to I commend uh, everyone involved uh, in the San Antonio Police Department for doing an outstanding job. Uh, in, in uh, identifying suspects and, and making arrests. Uh, let's let uh, the detectives do uh, complete their job. Let's let them uh, file the cases in our office, and then we'll make the charging decisions, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, and, and again, let, let me, I can't um, overestimate this. Uh, in order to bring justice to the memory of these two victims and in order to bring justice to the, to the survivors and the family members, uh, it's going to be a long road, but we have to take things one step at a time. Uh, so let's, let's do that. Let's let SAPD, SAPD do their job, uh, and then we'll need some time to review the facts and make those charging decisions. Uh, and once a case is indicted, then, then we'll go to the next step. Uh, and I'm sure uh, I will have questions about this, so I'm, let me get this out there right now. Uh, there have been questions about whether or not uh, this will be something that we will seek the death penalty on. Uh, it's too early to tell. I don't know whether or not this is something uh, that we will make that decision. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, as in every other case where we have a defendant who is death penalty eligible. We have a capital, I'm sorry, a capital crimes committee. Uh, that will meet, that will make, uh, we will hear a presentation from the lead prosecutor in the court where this case ends up, and then we will discuss the, uh, the facts uh, that go into making a decision to seek 
the death penalty. But again, it is too early to tell. We don't want to put the cart before the horse. Let's wait till we get an entire case filed in our office. Uh, and once that happens, once uh, I, I anticipate that we will have indictments returned, but we have to wait and, and let a grand jury make that decision. But after that, then then we will uh, we will take it to the next uh, level and, and, and excuse me, make whatever decisions that we need to. Thank you very much. I'll take a few questions. Andrew, for, for, the gun, for the gun that was recovered at the <clears throat> suspect's home, have you guys done any tests, run ballistics on the gun to see if there's been any other connections to crimes? I, I will just say that we believe it's the gun that was used in the murder. Uh, as far as the testing and the ballistic results go, um, I'm not sure what, quite what they have yet. Chief, can you help clear something up uh, on the surveillance video? We've had a lot of people reach out. It appears as if someone tosses the towel to Ramon Preciado yeah. before he wipes down the yeah. door on the sedan. Is that how it played out? What can you tell us about that small part of the scene? Yeah, that, that's something we're still looking into. It's something that's been brought up in conversation about this, so we're still looking into that. So that could potentially be a third suspect or someone that was there while the bodies were dropped off at the apartment? It, it, as the investigation continues, it, it could be. I'm, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it is possible. If someone was there, if there was a second person in that truck, are they, could they be charged with the same altering of a corpse or, um, you know, essentially moving the bodies? Is that they, how they, works? they could be, but I mean, that's, again, that's something that would be determined once the level of that person's involvement is understood, if that is the case at all. Uh, we saw videos of police activity on the house of uh, Preciado where you take the mom. Are you questioning her? I'm going to leave that question unanswered. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Appreciate Sorry. it. Sorry. Can you go over the charges one more time? One of them again? Sure. <clears throat> so the additional charges that were filed were uh, for Ramon. Christopher was arrested on a capital murder charge. Ramon was arrested on a charge of abuse of a corpse. Uh, yesterday, Christopher was also charged with abuse of a corpse, um, and he and Ramon were charged with altering, destroying, or concealing evidence. And as far as the capital murder charges, would it be one, two, or, or three? Do you know about how many charges that Christopher would face? I, it, it involves all of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay and, and, and any, I mean, any further questions you have, you might want to just refer to the affidavit, arrest affidavit. Okay. Joe, Claro que sí. Eh, pues estamos aquí para hablar uh, que, con respecto de, del caso uh, que se trata de las víctimas, en, en, uh, la señora Soto y el señor uh, Guerra, uh, Savannah Soto y Matthew Guerra. Uh, quiero decir que le agradezco mucho uh, a los miembros de la policía del departamento de SAPD por el trabajo que han hecho, uh, porque pudieron identificar uh, sospechosos en este caso rápido uh, y es, es un, una cosa muy positiva para nosotros uh, y hay, hay uh, un requisito que ellos tienen que, que uh, presentarnos el expediente, ¿verdad? los hechos del caso para que nosotros podamos revisar uh, ese, e, e, esos detalles y luego hacer la decisión cómo vamos a, a cargar a uh, uh, esas personas formalmente en, en, con lo que se dice un indictment. Vamos a tener que esperar hasta que presenten todo. Uh, más o menos esto tiene que ser, ser, se tiene que llevar de a cabo antes de 90 días. Uh, y, y después de ese tiempo vamos a presentar uh, los, hecho, los hechos del caso uh, ante un gran jurado y si podemos obtener el indictment o sea la acusación formal, entonces vamos a hacer decisiones uh, de ahí en adelante, incluyendo la decisión si vamos a pedir uh, la, la pena de muerte, pero vamos a que, na, tener que, que seguir uh, cuidado, so, con mucho cuidado, ¿verdad? Y vamos a empezar con ese, ese paso y luego vamos a hacer las decisiones. In English, uh, in uh, reference to your office released a statement regarding the fact that under Texas law, an unborn child is 
uh, considered a person when it comes to the capital murder. Can you just reiterate that on camera? Sure. Uh, clearly, we have enough to charge uh, Christopher uh, with uh, Preciado with capital murder because we have two adult victims. But under Texas law, when an unborn child, and, and it's under what, whatever period of gestation, uh, is that unborn child is considered a per person under Texas law for purposes of including an unborn child uh, as an additional count for capital murder. We have every intention, of course, of achievement madness. Uh, actually, uh, the sergeant uh, made a comment that they intend to file three charges uh, listing three victims. We have every intention of including the unborn child as, a, as an additional count uh, for capital murder. But again, we'll have to wait and see uh, when the case is filed. But, but that's correct. We can, we can charge someone with additional count. While, while you're asking the question, let me clarify because it's already been asked. Uh, why uh, the father, Ramon Preciado, is not charged with capital murder? Uh, someone can be charged with murder if that person is directly responsible uh, because that person uh, either intentionally or knowingly caused the death of the individual or that person can be charged with a, as a party to a murder. But under Texas law, the only way that someone can be charged as a party is that that person has to uh, uh, aid, assist, encourage, or abet the commission of the offense intended. As far as we know, there is no evidence to indicate uh, that the father was involved in the murder. Now, that may change as this case develops. Uh, the, the, uh, the detective is going to continue his investigation. If there is at some point some evidence that the father was, in fact, uh, involved in the murder, then, then that can change. But I know there, there is a common conception that when someone is an accessory, uh, in fact, that we can charge him. But he has to be more than an accessory, in fact, under Texas law. We have to be able to prove that he was a party to the offense. So, again, uh, for now, uh, the only one that's being charged with capital murder is Christopher Preciado. When it comes to these press conferences in cases like this one, everyone is always hyper-focused on what the investigators or on what law enforcement is saying. I, however, I focus on what they don't say. When these law enforcement agents, you know, these police, police chiefs, investigators, when they're sitting up there at the microphone answering questions, everyone's always locked in on the answers. Me? I'm more so focused on the questions they refuse to, an to answer. Because when they refuse to answer a question, there's a reason behind that. So when they're questioning them, about about Christopher's mom, and he says he doesn't want to answer that question right now, that's because they are definitely looking into Christopher's mom. Now, I know that the neighbors have posted video clips claiming that the mother was taken in for questioning. I don't know how true that is or not, but I do believe that she's been questioned. I don't know how true those videos are, are or not. I mean, we got people out here talking to spirit boxes the internet has blamed like 17 different people for this crime who were all innocent. You guys got to learn to stop believing every single thing you see on the internet. There's always weirdos and, and just all types of people who try to attach themselves to these cases. You know, I really find it odd that the neighbors, they have all of this time, right? They're all filming these videos of what's happening outside of Christopher's house. But none of y'all heard two people get shot outside of y'all's house? Oh, you hear every stir, every creak. Now that Christopher has been caught and police are over there searching the home, now you want to have your cameras going. But y'all didn't hear anything happen that night? You know what I mean? So I have questions about that. But anyway, right now I can confidently say that because they refuse to answer that question, that the answer to that question is yes, we are questioning her. We are looking into her. Because, you know, there's a possibility that she was the other person that everyone thinks was in that truck. And I've looked at the video. You know, I don't know for sure, but it damn sure looks like there was someone else in that truck. And I'm not the type of person that just believes anything I see on the internet. But as of right now, this press conference, um, it cleared up a few things. You know, it lets you know that the investigation's still ongoing. It looks as if they have the murder weapon. 
So that is a huge, huge deal. Everyone's looking at like, oh yeah, the killer has got caught. You got to understand, they still have to prove that Christopher and his father did this. You know, there still has to, uh, there still has to be like a trial. You know, like just because they've gotten caught doesn't mean they're they're gone forever yet. They have to prove some things. Now I know that that Christopher and Ramon they've already kind of you know put enough information out there to let law enforcement know that they were definitely involved in this. But we still got a long road ahead of us, folks. But for now, I want to know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. I have a lot more to talk about when it comes to this case today, so stay tuned. If you're feeling generous, you can drop a super thanks or you can donate to the channel directly. No one else takes a cut. It comes directly to me. You can donate directly via Cash App. I'll have the Cash App in the pinned comment. Or you can help this video for free and this channel for free by liking the video, subscribing, ringing the notification bell, all of that good stuff. And with that being said, I will be talking to you all very, very, very soon in the next one.